Blessing to y'all. Come on in on tonight. Yes, Lord. Blessing to you. Sister Lily, God bless you. Good to see you. Blessing to you, sister. Brother Jonathan, God bless you as well. Y'all come on in, come in and lift up your hearts. Candy M, God bless you. Come in and lift up your hearts as well. A woman of faith, God bless you. Let's get the numbers up tonight. Hope all is well and stay connected to God. Amen. I got an awesome word on tonight about the glory of tribulations. Amen. Despite of what you go through, the battle's not yours. It belongs to the Lord. It belongs to him. He gets all the glory out of my life. The battle that, every battle that I go through, it belongs to him. You have to get that in your mind on tonight. That see that very thing you're going through, it ain't just for no reason. That thing just didn't come out of nowhere. A lot of us didn't go through trials and uh, get caught off guard. God allows this thing to come and try you, the testing of your faith. And many of us, if you don't have no understanding of a trial, one of the worst trials to go through is when you don't have understanding. You don't understand. You don't have wisdom. You don't have understanding. He says, lean not to your what? Your own understanding. He says, acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. So many of us get in things. We say, God, I don't understand what you're doing. It's not for you to understand. There's some things God is doing in your life. What it's doing is, is working something out of you. It's working something in you. Building up your character. It's taking you to another level. You, you're about to get a message out of your mess. Your mess is going to a message. So I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what it looks like right now. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. Not about what you what you see. Not about how you feel. And that's why many of us get messed up. Because we start going by what it looks like. Oh, it looks bad in the natural. I'm sure all hell is breaking loose. I see you. I see it's like you, you try to get forward and you get pressed like five steps back. I see all of that. But you have to understand, God is in total control. We getting ready to come out of this. We coming out of every trial. We coming out with the victory. We coming out with a praise. I don't know about you, but I'm a basto baba de bossi. I'm a praise my way out. I'm going to praise my way into a breakthrough. I'm going to praise my way into the shackles fall. I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to still walk by faith and not by sight. One thing about it, what many of us are doing is we're not getting in the spirit. We don't have foresight. So when you get foresight to see what God is getting ready to do in your life, then you say, okay, God, I see why you did it that way. I see why that outcome was there, God. I see why you had to take me through the fire. I see why you came to try my faith. I see why you let me get hit with so much from the left and to the right. So now, God, I understand the warfare. I understand what elevation looks like. When you get an understanding of what God is doing in your life, many of us, we don't understand process. We don't understand process, so what we do is we break and we buckle, Sister Michaela, because we don't understand what God is doing. Have you ever sat and asked God, God, what are you doing in my life? Instead of just crying and complaining and murmuring and just giving up, throwing the towel, have you ever sat back and asked God, God, what are you doing? What are you taking me through? You'll be surprised at the response you'll get. He may seal it with a dream. He may seal it. He may seal it with visions. You'll be surprised at the response that God gives you. 
Say, God, God, I, I see, I see what you're taking me through, God, but I don't quite understand what you're going through, what you got me going through. God, I don't understand the process. So, God, open up my spiritual eye, open up my eyes, and let me see. When a man of God was going into battle, and he was, and the man was fearful, he said, he, he was fearful of the battle that they were in. He said, God, open up his eyes and let him see. So when he opened up his eyes, he seen angels all around. He seen a, a chariots with fire. He saw it, but see, his eyes kept, became open. But guess when it happened? In the middle of warfare. It happened in the middle of warfare when their back was up against the wall. When it felt like they was outnumbered. See, listen, we got more for us than the world is against us. Do you understand? We got Christ Jesus. I got angels protecting me. I got angels around my family. I don't care what it looks like. Begin to walk by faith and not by sight. If God be for us, who could be against us? So we're not worried about enemies. We're not worried about them. God is using our enemies to put us to a place where we need to be. Your enemy is going to be your stepping stone to your next level. Your trial is going to be your next stepping stone to your next elevation, to that next anointing. That's why I say I, I learned to glory in the tribulation. I learned to glory through my trials. I don't buckle. I don't complain. I feel the turbulence. I feel the darts. I, I feel it. But guess what, God? You told me to walk by faith and not by sight. Because I understand now that I cannot get a positive without a negative. So many of you think you're just going to keep saying blessings and there ain't going to be no opposition? You think you're just going to see a manifestation and a breakthrough and there not be nothing to try you? The word of God said, do not find it strange when fiery trials come up on you to try you, which is the testing of your faith. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with many of us. We feel like we ain't going to go through nothing. Half of us don't want to go through nothing. He says, when you know your God, those who know that God shall be strong and do great exploits. See, when you know God, you'll be strong throughout a thing. You're not just going to buckle and be weak. That's because you know your God. You know there's nothing impossible with God. You're going to know that. So the trials you go through, you say, God, you know what? I know you're going to get the victory out of this thing. I start decreeing and declaring a thing. God, you showed me you coming out of this trial. I'm coming out. I decree and declare manifestation. I decree and declare my breakthrough. I'm going to start speaking this thing into existence. Despite of what it looks like, I'm in the spirit. You gave me foresight. I saw what you said. So I'm decreeing and declaring this thing. I got to a place where I said, God, whatever you do in my life, I don't care what it is. I'm still going to praise you. The worst trial of my life, I was still giving God glory. When my back was up against the wall, I was still giving God glory. Financial issues, still giving God glory. Allegations, still giving God glory. I didn't stop giving God praise. I didn't stop reading my word. I didn't stop fasting. I didn't stop praying. I didn't stop staying consistent. I was consistent before God. All the way through the trial. What I'm about to say. See it's not about how you start. But it's about how you finish. See there's many that start off on fire for God. That ministry starts off well. But as soon as a little trial comes. Now you're ready to commit suicide. You're ready to back down off ministry. You're ready to walk away from the mandate and the assignment. Because it's too hard. Because of the warfare. Because of these trials and tribulations. One thing about it, I got to the place that I said, you know what? Because there's opposition, that means I'm in position. That means I'm going where I need to be. If I'm moving against resistance, when it seems like something's fighting me to get to a place, where well, I see a bunch of hell breaking loose and I'm still pressing, that lets me know that I'm where I need to be. That lets me know I'm in the will of God. If I'm seeing opposition and I'm doing everything you told me to do, I'm being obedient. I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm staying submitted to your word. I'm staying dedicated. I'm, consi I'm consistent. So that lets me know that I'm doing something right. 
when you see opposition, that should let you know that's a sign unto you that you're doing something right. When you've been obedient, you're doing what God told you to do, you're still consistent, that's a sign. When you see that opposition, that you're in position. But see, God want to see if you can take something. Many of us can't even suffer. We don't understand what suffering is. One thing about it, when you go through tribulations, one of the main definitions for tribulations is suffering. One thing for a true child of God, suffering is their trademark. How many of you have, have been suffering? How many of you have been suffering through some things? You may not tell nobody, you may not comment, but how many of you have been suffering right now, going through these trials and tribulations, these secret trials? You've been going through in your mind, people connected to you. You got so much going on. I mean, you suffering right now in this flesh. You suffering to stay holy. You suffering to stay clean from the addictions. You suffering to stay free from the soul ties. See, you suffering in this flesh. He said, arm yourselves likewise with the same suffering. Yeah, you're going to have to suffer in this flesh. Suffering is a trademark to God. Suffering is a trademark for the children of God. You're going to have to suffer. It may not feel good. It's not going to feel pleasant. Fact about it, you're going to feel like giving up. Fact about it, you're going to feel like throwing in a towel. But I came to bring you a for sure word of prophecy on tonight. That God is getting ready to, get, uh, he's getting ready to bring you out. God is getting ready to loose us. God is getting ready to set us free. Just through a spoken word. Get in a place that, listen, you say, God, whatever you do in my life, I'm going to give you glory. Despite of what's going on to the left and to the right, I'm still going to give you glory. Despite of what it looks like, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And that's what's happening to many of us. We go on by what it looks like. If you can just get in the spirit and receive this on tonight, I'm just kind of flowing because... I feel in my spirit how many of us have just been suffering. God changed the whole message. I had a whole nother message uh, that I was going to do tonight about mercy and truth. And God brought a whole nother message. One thing about it, I'll, 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 I'm going to be a sign unto you uh, tonight of what you're going through. See, one thing about it, what, what, a, what God does he takes a prophet. He brings them to a place so they can minister from that place. So he's going to let them be a sign unto you. He let Ezekiel be a sign to them. He let Jeremiah be a sign unto them. So he sends a man of God. He sends a prophet to be a sign unto the nations, unto the people, to declare a thing. There's going to be declarations through this word. God's going to speak so uh, so prophetically in this season for his people. You got to understand that what you're going through, listen, this thing this thing has purpose to it. It has purpose to it. Why they lied on you, there was purpose for why God let that stuff happen. There was purpose on why he let that marriage end. Why he brought you out of that situation. There were some things that was detrimental to your, your soul. You better hear me on tonight. If you don't hear no other message this week, listen to this one. Because many of us are suffering in this flesh. We suffer. You might not tell nobody. You might not tell me. But you say, man of God, I've been suffering. I've been suffering to stay clean. I've been suffering to stay faithful in my marriage. I'm inconsistent. I'm up and down. I got this bipolar spirit. My finances are like, feel like they're getting ready to drown me. But I came and tell somebody on tonight. You may feel like you're going down. But you're going to stay afloat in this season. God ain't got book cool by say, God ain't going to let you fall. He ain't going to let you sink. You're going to stay afloat in this season. I don't care what it look like. One thing about it, when I was in a swimming pool, when I was in a swimming pool, there, when I didn't, when I didn't used to know how to swim, of course, when I was younger, there was a certain, they used to rope off a certain place in the pool at the YMCA. And if you go too far past, I remember I was young, I used to be kind of dancing down, seeing how far I can go down. 
you know, and before I before I you know try to sing, I was just foolish. I was young. I thought as a child. I spake as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You understand. So what I did was I used to tiptoe all the way down to the deep end in the water, you know, just kind of testing the waters, playing around. Well, I messed around and went in too deep. Went in too deep, ended up going under. <laughs> you know, so the lifeguard came, the lifeguard jumped in. I saw two lifeguard jumps. So I'm sitting there sinking, like, I'm just going down, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I'm not a swim, I'm just, just a, a child, you know what I mean? And the lifeguards jumped in and saved me. Watch this. They jumped in and saved me, brought me up, and I was just crying. I was scared. I've never experienced nothing like that in my life. So God confirmed this with a dream that you may you may feel like you're sinking. But listen, I'm going to help you stay afloat. I thought I was sinking, but all of a sudden I came afloat and I was on my back and I was backpedaling. It seems like you're sinking right now. But listen, you're going to rise up. God ain't going to let you die. He ain't going to let you sink. He ain't going to let you go down. We stand afloat in this hour. Matter of fact, we getting ready to rise to the occasion. I know what's been happening in your life. It's like all hell is broke loose financially. Pain all in your body. Can't hear God. Can't feel God. You say, God, like what's going on? I thought I was yours. You told me I was bought with a price. You told me you'll never leave me nor forsake me. So God, why it seem like now that other people have walked out of my life, why it seem like I've lost you too? But you said, as I am, so are you in this present world. That in that day, you'll know that I'm in a father. I'm in you and I am in you. I'm in him and I am in you. So you in me, so what's going on? You know what I need to do? God, I need what's in me to come up on me. I need to feel your presence once again. I need that glory. I need that weighted glory. I need that I will call by sin. I need that Shekinah glory to come in a room when I worship. I need one touch from you to let me know it's going to be all right. I need you to touch my mind. God, get rid of everything that's not like you. God, send a shifting in my life. God, remove these toxic thoughts, these wicked imaginations. These thoughts of committing sin, these, these, temptation, these, these temptations, these lustful desires. God, remove this stuff. Remove the cigarettes, the alcohol. God, help me, Taboko Basse. Help me to get it right. This message right here, beloved, is going to really help somebody understand the, the suffering. Why you had to suffer like you did? Why are you suffering right now in this flesh? You trying to do everything in your power to live right? You giving, you fasting, you praying, you seeking God, and you say, God, there's still no breakthrough. God, I still don't see light at the end of the tunnel. Have y'all been there or is it just me? Where it feel like you're doing everything and you consist and you seeking God. You standing in the gap for others. You teaching five days a week and the bottom just still keep falling out. It's like something just keep going wrong. It's one thing after another. It's like as soon as you leave, get out of a trial, you enter it into a trial. You enter into a trial. Wait a minute, God. I just came up out of a trial. What are you doing? God's not going to put no more on you than you're able to bear. One thing about it, he says, I will not suffer my Holy One to see corruption. Neither will I leave your soul in hell. See, God ain't going to leave you like that. He ain't going to leave you like that. He ain't going to leave you in despair. He ain't going to leave you weak. He ain't going to leave you broken. He ain't going to abandon you like the world did. He ain't going to abandon you like your father did. See, God ain't going to leave you like that. Although it feels like he left you, beloved, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even until the end of, the, end of time. That man is there. Even when you don't feel his presence, he's still there. Even when you don't understand what you're going through, you don't understand the process, God is there. God is closer than what he's ever been. 
Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that which shall be revealed in us. He said these, these, these sufferings in this present time, that means right now. These present sufferings, not from yesterday, not from the day before, but I'm talking about these present sufferings. How many of y'all dealing with present sufferings? This present stuff we going through right now is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's getting ready to be revealed. This the eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has prepared and has stored up for you. You haven't seen the blessings yet. So that's something that's getting ready to be revealed. But how do you get there? You endure, endure temptation, endure lust, endure the holy circumstances, keep living right despite of what, what it looks like, stay consistent, keep fasting, keep praying. I want you to keep abounding in my works, remaining steadfast and unmovable. In this present time that where I'm at, see, I gotta have, you still got to stand still despite of what it looks like. One thing about it, there's two, there's two uh, type of stills. When God tells you to stand still, who is this for? You've heard God speak to you and he told you to stand still. You think in other words, he's saying stand still, like just stay in one spot. No, there's another, there's another word, meaning you can stay where you at, keep doing what you're doing, stay where you at, keep seeking me, keep fasting. But see, one thing about it, one thing about it, he says, well, he's still in there eating. She's still in there eating. I want you to keep doing the same thing. I want you to keep moving. I want you to keep going forward. I want you to keep doing the same thing you've been doing. Yeah, you got the other way. He says, stay, stay still, stay still, don't move. You still eating. You still going forward. You still giving me glory. Keep doing the same thing you've been doing. You understand? I'm still, I'm still giving God the glory. Despite of my back bent up against the wall, I'm still, I still got a praise. I still got a worship in my mouth and a worship in my belly. For he says, I reckon that these present sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's getting ready to be revealed in us. Now, Kabbalah say, there's a work getting ready to be revealed in you. So what you're going through is doing something for you. It's working something up in you and up out of you. It's getting things up out of you that you didn't know was there. It's getting this bitterness, this hatred, this anger. One thing about it, when you go through your true trials, when you go through those hardest trials of your life, your character starts to show. Your true character starts to show. What's in you going to come up out of you. That's why I said these present sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There's going to be a glory revealed in us. But see, God got to first see if you can take something. I got to see if you can still take a lick and keep on ticking. I got to see if you're still going to be able to give under pressure, love under pressure, even when you've been wounded, even when you've been church hurt. Can you still pray for the pastor? Can you still stand in the gap for your brothers and sisters that roll your eyes at you every Sunday? Can you still stand in the gap for the main usher? See, I'm trying your faith right now. God is trying many of y'all with people. So these present sufferings, this present stuff we going in right now is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's getting ready to be revealed in us. I know what it looks like. I know about the present sufferings. This present stuff that I go through day in and day out. I know what it look like. But listen, I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get discouraged. In fact about it, I'm gonna be encouraged about a thing. Because you say it's not worthy to be compared. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that's getting ready to be revealed in me. So that's something that's getting ready to be revealed. So I thank you, Abul Shaka I thank you for the suffering. 
I thank you for everything that you've been taking me through. Even when I didn't understand it, you still getting the glory out the situation. God's still going to get the glory out of your situation. Even when you don't understand it. Even when you're going by what it looks like. Even when all hell breaking loose. Even when your back is up against the wall. God is still going to get the glory out of this thing. See, many of us are in a season that we don't have no direction. We toss to and fro. That's why many of us still seeking prophecy. Many of us aren't praying. We're not seeking God. And we can't hear God like we should. We don't have no spiritual eye. We don't have a spiritual understanding. A lot of us are still weak in our faith. We still at the mediocre level. Don't have no understanding. Our foundation is off. It's hard to pull somebody out of water when you standing in quicksand. You still trying to minister. You still trying to teach. You still trying to prophesy. But your faith is small. Do you understand? See, your faith still needs elevation. You still got to come up in your faith. You believe in God for something. Somebody else is believing God for something. But see, he said, I've given to each man each measure of faith. See, if we get in these present sufferings and we start doubting God. Who am I talking to? We get in this present stuff, these trials, we start doubting God. Start doubting the voice of God. Well, maybe it's not going to happen. Maybe I'm not going to get the business. Well, maybe the ministry ain't going nowhere. See, what the enemy do, enemy are like to slip a seed of doubt. Why are you going through a thing? See, he starts sending you that spirit of unbelief when you're going through trials and tribulations. And all of a sudden now, you start questioning the very thing that God spoke to you. So now nothing you will, well, maybe it's not really, you know, maybe I made it up. Maybe I spoke to myself and now the enemy got you questioning yourself because of these present sufferings. Now all of a sudden you doubt God. You throw in a towel, you lose faith because you say you call God and he didn't, you didn't get an answer back. I called for him and I didn't get an answer back. I reached out to him, I prayed to him, and I did get an answer back. You walking in the answer right now and don't even know it. That Kababase. A lot of us are things that we praying for. Listen, it's not even in the will of God anyway. See, one thing about it, when you pray, you can't pray amiss. He also said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I don't think he should ask anything of me and receive it. God ain't going to reward no double-minded man. He ain't going to reward no double-minded woman. First off, he already told you those who come must come believing. Many of us still got doubt. And they will wonder why we not seeing the manifestation. Many of us aren't lined up with his word. So we wonder why we not seeing a manifestation. But then we turn around and get mad because we ain't getting a blessing. And that we ask for a thing that God, that we ask God for a thing. And we not seeing it come to pass. I tell people all the time, listen, examine yourself. To see where you at. I tell them all the time. And people don't like that. People get mad when you talk like that. But I came and I came to a place in this life. I've been on this earth long enough to understand and realize that things aren't just happening for no reason. There's purpose behind why things happen. Most of the things happen so God can try our faith. But many of you don't understand if you if you if you're constantly carnal minded and you're not in the spirit, you're not gonna understand what God is doing in your life. You got to get completely in the spirit and say, God, I trust you what you're doing. I may not understand it. I may not understand this thing, but I still trust you. I trust the process you're bringing me through. And God, I understand right now that these present sufferings, what I'm going through right now, is not worth being compared with the glory that's going to be revealed. It's not worth it, beloved. Keep going through that thing. It's not worth it. It's not worth the glory that's getting ready to be revealed. That's getting ready to be a manifestation that's going to hit your life. That's going to blow your mind. 
God getting ready to turn this thing completely around. So while you murmuring and complaining, turn that thing around and put a praise on it. Turn around and start giving God glory. Start walking up in a church with your hands lifted up, giving God praise. They say, I ain't never seen her shout. I ain't never seen him shout like that. Start giving God praise for what you're going through. Start magnifying God more, more than your situations. Many of y'all magnify situations, so you're making your situations bigger than God. When you're supposed to be doing the opposite. You're supposed to be magnifying God more than your situation. God is bigger than every trial. He's bigger than any sickness. He's bigger than financial troubles. He said the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. Everything belongs to God. I don't care what it looks like. Even a sickness in your body, God knows everything about you. God can send an angel heal you. Your finances is messed up. God can erase the dead. God can cause people to give. I call Baba say, God can unloose the heavens on your behalf. You understand? Many of us, by your faith, God gonna move. You gonna speak a word through your worst trial and this thing cease. You gonna speak a word through your worst storm and say, peace be still. And it be calm. You gonna go in your home and say, peace be still. Husband up the upstairs arguing, fighting, kids going crazy. You're going to walk in the house and say, peace be still. And all of a sudden, they get quiet. Through the anointing, through the power of God, do you understand? Many of y'all don't understand the authority that's in your mouth. You sitting here looking at the trials, not knowing you have the authority to speak this thing. I command this trial to end now. I command my breakthrough. I command my blessings. I command peace right now in my home. I command peace in my job. In Jesus' name. Many of you got the authority, but you're not using it. You're not using it. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16, verse number 33. He says, These things I have spoken unto you that in, in me ye may have peace. In either, he said, but in, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of a good cheer, I have come, overcome the world. But he said, listen, in the world ye shall have tribulation. There's going to be tribulation in this world. There's going to be tribulation in this earth realm. This thing is going to happen. But he said, be of a good cheer. In other words, listen, be cheerful about it. Start giving God glory about it. In another word, he told us a glory through tribulation, that tribulation work in patience. Patience, hope, hope work of experience. And experience make uh, hope or not a shame. One thing about it, be of a good cheer. Be of a good cheer about the, the tribulation that you're going through. Start magnifying and praising God and giving God the glory about what you're going through. He says, I've overcome the world. I've overcome it. So if as I am, so are you. You can overcome a thing. You can overcome the sickness. You can overcome the addiction, the trials, the financial troubles. You can overcome this thing. He said, be of a good cheer. That's why he told you, listen, do not find it strange when fiery trials come up on you to try you. Don't find it strange because it's coming. He sat right here in this world and told you to be of a good cheer. So that lets me know, beloved, there's a brighter side to your tribulation. There's a brighter side to this thing. There's sunlight at the end of that tunnel. It's dark right now, but there's sunlight. It's night right now. But in like six hours from now, it's going to be sunlight. That's a sign unto you what God is doing. Nature teaches us the ways of God. It's not going to stay like that. You ain't going to stay broke forever. You ain't going stay to stay in bondage forever. You ain't going to stay captive forever. God getting ready to loose you. Begin to glory in tribulation despite of what it looks like. Begin to walk by faith and not by sight. But in despite of how you feel inside. Still give God glory and say, God, listen, I don't understand what you're doing, but I trust you. I'm going to give this battle to you because, God, you are strong in battle. You are mighty. 
Somebody, you have to understand that falling is not the failure. You may have fallen, but how'd you get back up? You may have fell, but guess what God getting ready to do? He getting ready, he's getting ready to raise you up mightier and stronger than what you've ever been. A, a righteous man falls seven times, but he get back up. See, you may have fallen. Do you understand? But God getting ready to raise you up. You getting ready to rise to the occasion. You might feel like you're seeking. But listen, God going to keep you afloat. I just want to bless y'all tonight on this word about the glory of tribulations. Many of you better start giving God praise. You better start magnifying God. That's what's going to bring your breakthrough. That's what's going to cause God to overturn the captivity. That's what's going to cause him to loose the bands off your finances. That's what's going to cause the liberation. Those who the sun set free is free indeed. You have to understand, get into the presence of, and presence of the Lord in this hour. In the presence of the Lord, there's freedom, there's liberty, there's peace. Get in his presence, get confirmation in this hour. Hear from him. You don't have to be listening to every other voice. Get in your word on tonight. Say, God, listen, God, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking an answer. I'm seeking a word. God, I'm seeking confirmation. Speak to me. Help me Help me to not lean on my own understanding. Show me which way to go. Give me eyes to see, ears to hear. In Jesus' name, God bless y'all. I just want to encourage y'all. How many received this message on tonight? Type, I receive. Amen. Not really worried about the numbers because I still flow without numbers. You know, there's people that get discouraged by that. Just because there was five people on, guess what? If only one received it, I'm okay. Because this word right here came to encourage somebody on tonight. It wasn't about you need to repent. It wasn't about none of that. But I had to come give you a word to encourage you. I'll cut your flesh later on. You know, but I had to encourage you about the season that we're in right now. About the sufferings, the present sufferings. And it don't feel good. No, it don't feel good when you suffer in the way you suffer. In. But listen, there's a purpose behind this thing. There's purpose why God is taking you through. There's purpose why you have the restless nights. There's purpose why the people connected to you giving you hell. There's purpose behind that boss cutting your job. You have to understand, despite of what it looks like, I think what God going to do in this season, God getting ready to blow our minds. God getting ready to blow our minds like never before. And when he moves, you're going to say, God, you know what? I heard it. I received it. I believed it. So therefore, guess what? It manifested. Do you take God at his word that God can do anything but fail? Do y'all really believe that? Do you believe what you see? Many of y'all read this word every day and still don't believe it. You read that word every day and still don't believe it. He said, those who must come to me must come believe it. You can't have doubt. It's like a seed being tossed to and fro. That's why we toss to and fro. We don't believe. We don't have faith. Like he told Peter, oh, ye little faith, why did you doubt? Because what Peter did, Peter came in that realm where he was walking on water. And Peter began to sink because he took his eyes off Jesus took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. He's, and, and came and rescued Peter. Oh, ye little faith, why did you doubt? So he called little faith doubt. It, it's not that he didn't have any. It just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough faith to come in that realm where Jesus was. That's why he began to sink. That's why many of us feel like we're sinking now. Because we don't have the faith. But guess what, what Jesus did? He grabbed Peter. You may feel like you're sinking, beloved. But God going to keep you afloat. I love you so much. So much to give you a word. To bring you confirmation. Amen. But I thank y'all for receiving it on tonight. Amen. Also y'all giving to this word. If you eat here, give here. You understand. And I thank y'all for being diligent. diligent. I thank y'all for watching me on the midnight cry. And I'll be back on tomorrow night as well. Amen. God bless y'all. Anybody have any prayer? Any questions? Amen. You can also email me at prophettravismiller at gmail.com. You can give at prophettravis33 at PayPal me. Amen. God bless you. Any any prayer on tonight? And I thank y'all for coming on. This kind of word is not, it's not for everybody. 
you know, like I said, people when it's your season that you're going to get money and, and checks in the mail. But there are people really suffering and going through. There are people going through heavy trials, serious trials, trials that are detrimental. But see, God's sending people through for a reason. He let them folks hit your finances. He let them folks garnish your wages. See, a lot of us are dealing with seeds that we sown. It ain't just the enemy all the time. We like to blame the enemy for everything. We blame an enemy for seeds that we've sown. We got a lot of self-inflicted wounds. These are stuff that we inflicted on our own. So we blame the devil for any, everything, any and everything. We don't take accountability. When you start taking accountability for you, that's when God can move for you. Many of us are not taking accountability. That has a lot to do with character. You want to see the greatest miracle? Get a character change. One thing about it, I, I desire God more than anything. I can't allow nothing to, to take me out of God. Nothing. I'm going to seek God. I want to decrease so he might increase in my life. God sent a chosen fans. God take me to another place in the spirit. God send the fire. Send the basto. Send the fire. Send the glory. Send the anointing. Many of you don't want to pray. God will do something to make you pray. You want to, You don't want to seek him. He'll do something to make you seek him. You don't want to fast. He'll make you fast. God has a way of getting you to a place. He has a way of whooping you to a place. And that's the kind of God we serve. All right. You sitting here saying you want a chosen fast. Oh God, I want my prayer life to go to another level. What God will do is... Be careful what you ask for because God will whoop you so bad to where you'll pray. I'm going to hit you with something that's going to make you pray. Yeah. I'm going to hit you with financial problems. I'm going to let you lose that job to make you fast and pray and seek me until I open up another door, until I pour out a blessing. That's how God works because not knowing God is conditioning you for the position. God is building up your character. He's building up integrity. God is building you up to be a great man of God, a great woman of God. But if you buckling, you'll never catch the revelation of what he's doing. That's why I say stay in God. Amen. But I'm going to release a prayer. Says nobody, y'all don't have no prayer. I guess y'all self-righteous. You don't have no prayer. You ain't going through nothing. You don't need God to move for you. I need God to move for me. I need God to move for my flesh. I need eyes to see, ears to hear. You ain't got no prayer requests. I got one. I got one. I need a breakthrough financially. I need God to pour out the windows of heaven. I want that. I want that manna. I want that fresh glory. I want that fresh anointing. You don't have no prayer. You don't have nothing specific. What you want God to do for you? You understand? Don't be ashamed to ask for prayer. That's pride. That's pride got you like that. When you can't say, God, help me to pray against lust. Help me to pray against fornication. Help me to pray for the blindness to fall. Let God know what you need, what you're ashamed to ask God for. One thing about it, I'm transparent. I'm not going to sugarcoat. But anytime you can't say you need prayer and you can't let God know what you need, that's pride. You're afraid that people might see your problem, what's wrong with you? Truth be told, we all messed up and need God. We all got something we need from God. This ain't religion right here. I'm going to set it all the way straight. I'm not going to sugarcoat because I don't know about you. I need God more than anything. I need prayer work. I need a prayer. I need somebody standing in the gap. I'm an intercessor and I need an intercessor. An intercessor needs an intercessor. An intercessor needs to be covered. Amen. But God bless you. God asks you to move not by power nor by might on tonight. God move for candy more. God open up doors in this hour in Jesus name. God send guidance to Sister Lisa. God move. Restore her mind. Give her insight. Give her eyes to see. Show her which way to go. God break the spirit of disobedience. God I thank you for what you get our bull bull style. God, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Unleash clarity. Unleash dreams and visions upon your people. 
Release a fresh wind up Osha, a fresh wind up on them all when they sleep. Refresh them and recharge them. God asks you to restore like never before. God energize us. Lord, break that slow for spirit. Give us energy throughout the day. Give us more drive. Give us more passion and dedication. Lord, help us to be submissive. Help us stay consistent. God, we give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. But like I said, I need a few people to give on tonight. Like I said, people say, well, I don't got it. Well, one thing about it, is it, is it, um, is it so much that if I restore unto you spiritually that I reap your carnal? Do you understand? And like I said, I wouldn't ask for no reason. I wouldn't ask for no reason. Say, God, give me eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. God bless y'all. You need all, for all my information. It's all on the profile. And I thank y'all for being on, on tonight. I'll be back on tomorrow night for the Midnight Crowd. I love you. Be blessed.